Vucheria is a single genus of family Vucheriaceae, phylum Xanthophyta, the later commonly known as yellow green algae. Let us start with the important features of Vucheria. Vucheria presently comprise of about 276 species which occur abundantly in the temperate regions of the world. Majority of these are found in terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems as a few species are marine like Vocheria pyloboloids. The terrestrial species form extensive yellowish or deep green dense covering or mat on wet soil and in flower pots in greenhouses commonly known as water felt. Two widely distributed species are Vocheria sicilis and Vocheria geminata. Vocheria sicilis occurs both on land and in water, while is Vocheria uncinata is aquatic and Vocheria amphibia is amphibious. The thallus is composed of yellowish green, cylindrical, coarse filaments branched at irregular intervals. In terrestrial species, the thallus is attached to the substratum by small tufts of colorless rhizoids or a lobed hapteron. The aerial filaments possess monopodial branching and apical growth. As there is no septa or cross walls, the protoplasm is continuous along its entire length. Septa occurs only during injury and formation of reproductive structures. The filament is weak, thin and inelastic. It consists of an inner layer of cellulose and outer layer of pectic substances. Inside of the cell wall, there is a layer of cytoplasm containing cell organelles. The chromatophore contains chlorophyll A, chlorophyll E, keratinides, it lacks chlorophyll B, pyrenides are almost absent. The reserve of food is oil or fat and gets stored within the cytoplasm in the form of countless droplets. In which area, cytokinesis is not followed by mitosis, so the thallus has xenocytic nature. In which area, plastids can change their orientation in response to change in light levels. In which area, chloroplasts along with small vesicles and mitochondria move with the streaming of cytoplasm along with longitudinal axis of the filament in dark. Cytoplasmic fibrillus have been reported in the family of Vocheria litoria. The photoreceptors of light oriented moment of chloroplast are present in the cytoplasm rather than in the chloroplast. Vocheria is an acellular organism. It is wrong. To call Vocheria as a unicellular organism, it possesses all the features of multicellular organism. Also, in unicellular forms, growth consists of an increase in size of the entire cell. However, in Vocheria, growth is apical. Therefore, it is appropriate to call Vocheria in general as an acellular synocytic organism rather than a unicellular or multicellular form. Vocheria reproduces by three methods, vegetative, asexual and sexual. It takes place through fragmentation. In this method, the thallus breaks up accidentally into short segments which ultimately form new individuals.
In Vocheria, a sexual reproduction takes place by different moods depending upon the habitat in which the alga lives. In aquatic species, it occurs by formation of zoospores. Traditional species form zoospores only when fledged. Zoospore formation. It is the commonest method of asexual reproduction in aquatic forms. Zoospores are large, multinucleate, and multifledged structures. They are formed singly within elongated, club shaped zoosporangia, which develop at the end of side branch. The zoosporangia gets swollen into a club shaped structure. The entire protoplast of the zoosporangium contracts to form an oval, multinucleate mass. The incipient zoospores. The mature zoospores escape through a narrow aperture, which is formed by the gelatinization of the wall of the distal end of the zoosporangium. Now, the morphology of zoospores. The multinucleate and multifledged zoospores are peculiar to which area. All other genera related to it produce small bifledged. Uninucleate zoospores developed in large numbers in each zoosporangium. The zoospores are a compound structure formed as a result of the failure of protoplast within the zoosporangium to divide into uninucleate bifledged zoospores. Thus, it may be more appropriate to term it as a syn zoospore, a view supported by two facts. Number one, presence of the central vacuole of the parent zoosporangium, and number second, paired disposition of the flagella opposed the nuclei. Now, the germination of zoospores. After a period of 5 to 15 minutes of silicate movement, the zoospores come to rest, flagella becomes motionless, and then vanish completely. The zoospores round off and becomes covered with a thin cellulose wall. At this stage, the chromatophores move outwards and nuclei move inwards. The zoospores then elongates in one or two opposite directions in the form of tubular outgrowths. One of these undergo branching to form the colorless lobed hold fast while the other continues to grow indefinitely to produce the yellowish green tubular filaments. Another method of asexual reproduction is formation of apelinospores. These are non-motile asexual spores produced by the terrestrial species. The aquatic species produce them only when the algae is exposed to drought or transferred from light to darkness or from running to settled water. The apelinospores develop at the ends of short laterals or terminal branches in apelinosporangia. The terminal apelinosporangia is cut off by septum from the branch. The protoplast of the apelinosporangium is converted into a single rounded thin walled apelinospore, which is liberated by the irregular rupture of the sporangial wall. The single apelinospore produced within the apelinosporangia is set free through the apical pore formed by the dissolution of the sporangial membrane. After liberation, apelinospore germinates to give rise to a new thels. Now, the another method of asexual reproduction is formation of echinites. In some aquatic and terrestrial species, when exposed to greater desiccation or low temperature, the branched filaments divide into a row of short segments by thick gelatinous cross walls. These resting multinucleate thick walled segments are known as the cystus or hyponospores, or they are also called as echinites. The cyst in a chain may remain connected by the parent membrane of the filament, which appears like another alga gangrosira. Thus, this stage of vocheria is also called gangrosira stage. 
onset of favorable conditions for growth, the echinids directly grow into a new individual. All species of Vocharia reproduce sexually. It is Ugame style. Most of the species are monoecious, that is homothelic. They are exclusively freshwater or terrestrial forms. Species such as Vocharia dicotoma, which are marine, is dioecious, that is heterothelic. The male and female gametes differ greatly in size, form and structure. They are produced in the distinct and specialized sex organs. The male sex organ is called anthrenium and female sex organ is, is ogonium. Position of sex organs. In the monoecious or homothelic species, the anthridia and ogonia usually occur close to one another. Eight intervals along the same filament arising as a lateral outgrowth. There is a great variation in the arrangement of sex organs in the different species or even different individuals of the same species. Let us start with the structure of sex organs. Anthridia. In Vacharia, the major anthridium is a cylindrical tubular structure strongly covered like a horn. In some cases, it is a straight. The young anthridium contains cytoplasm, nuclei and chloroplast. At maturity, it contains numerous male gametes or sperms, which in some species are liberated through a single aperture and in others through several apertures. The liberated soap sperm is an extremely minute oval spindle shepherd or pear shepherd colorless structure with two laterally inserted and opposed phylogela of unequal length. The short one points forwards and long one points backwards. Now, ogonium. The ogonium is a spherical or white structure which usually appears sessile or subsessile. It is separated from the supporting filament by a cross wall at its base and develops a short rounded beak at the tip towards maturity. The mature ogonium contains a single large nucleus located in the center and numerous chromatophores. Reserve food is stored in the form of oil droplets. The protoplasmic contents surround off to form a single large egg cell or womb. Now fertilization. Both the sex organs open almost simultaneously, the ogonium a little before the anthridium. The anthridia and ogonia situated close together may dehis almost same time or either of them may open from a few minutes, minutes to two hours before the other dehises. At the tip of the beak of the ogonium, is formed a pore where from a colorless cytoplasm oozes out through the apical aperture. At this stage, the chromatophores and oil droplets move to the center of the ohm, which is surrounded by a colorless layer of lining cytoplasm. Several sperms emitted from the apical pore in the wall of anthridium gather around it. The small male nucleus lies near the female nucleus and increases in size until it has swollen to the nearly the same volume before it fuses with the female nucleus. A membrane is formed across the ogonial aperture after fertilization. The zygote becomes oospore after secreting several layers thick wall around itself. When the original wall gets decayed, the oospore gets liberated. It then undergoes a period of rest. The resting zygote contains a number of 
reddish or brownish bodies now the germination of oospore spore after the dormant period the oospore spore germinates directly into a new filament without the formation of meiospores it is held that reduction occurs in the first nuclear division in the germinating oospore spore in that case the thallus is haploid now according to mundi 1929 wucheria thallus is diploid and meiosis occurs at a time of gamete formation the thick oospore spore wall ruptures through the split emerges colorless germ tube or as a lateral outgrowth of the germ tube which forms the aerial system <laughs>